time to turn around of business. Kate Moody joins us. The US is taking further action to try to reduce the soaring price of petrol. Kate? Well, for the third time in six months, Mark, the US President Joe Biden has ordered that more oil be released from the country's strategic reserves. It'll be 180 million barrels over the coming six months. That's about a million barrels per day. It is the biggest ever use of this stockpile. Since the 1970s, Washington has held an emergency supply of crude oil in case imports dry up. America's Strategic Petroleum Reserve currently has just over 568 million barrels in stock. Today's order will reduce that by about a third. The most recent release had only a limited effect on petrol prices, but Biden says, says that he still believes the move will protect American households. There isn't enough supply. And the bottom line is, if we want lower gas prices, we need to have a more oil supply right now. Concerns about global supplies of oil, the OPEC Plus group met on Thursday, but refused to drastically increase the pace of production. OPEC, a grouping of 13 major oil producers, has been coordinating output with allies like Russia. They said this Thursday they would continue their modest pace of pumping more oil, despite external pressure to drastically increase supplies. Meanwhile, European economies are increasingly worried about supplies of natural gas as a standoff continues over how to pay for Russian imports. After appearing to backtrack yesterday, Vladimir Putin has doubled down on demands that shipments be paid for in rubles, not euros or dollars. Gazprom Bank says it's facilitating the creation of special accounts for foreign buyers. But EU leaders say the ultimatum amounts to a breach of contract and that they won't bend. Alison Sargent reports. It's an ultimatum aimed at boosting Russia's currency and hitting back at Western sanctions. Russian President Vladimir Putin confirmed that starting Friday, April 1st, foreign countries deemed unfriendly will need to pay for their gas in rubles or be cut off from Russian energy. If these payments are not successful, we would consider it as buyer's failure to meet their commitments with all the relevant consequences. Nobody sells anything to us for free. Neither are we going to do charity work. That means the current contracts would be brought to a halt. Russia supplies around 40 percent of Europe's gas, making energy the most powerful lever Russia has to push back on Western sanctions over the invasion of Ukraine. The new decree signed by Putin would require gas payments to go through Russia's state-owned Gazprom bank. European governments have rejected it as an attempt at blackmail and a breach of their contracts. We looked at the contracts on gas and other deliveries. In them, it's stated that payment is in euros, sometimes in dollars, but usually in euros. And I told the Russian president that it will stay that way. We will have to look at his actions now, but what is clear is that companies want to and will pay in euros. While the EU did not follow the U.S. in banning Russian energy, the bloc is planning to slash imports of Russian gas by two-thirds this year. But alternative options are limited. France and Germany say they're preparing for Russian gas flows to potentially be halted. And Germany and Austria, the most heavily reliant on Russian energy, have already activated emergency plans that could lead to rationing. Let's check in on the day's trading action now. Wall Street has closed in the red. Losses of about one and a half percentage points across the board. Uh, the Dow Jones losing, closing out its worst quarter in about two years. Oil prices dipped as well. US WTI dipping about 6%. The international benchmark Brent crude about five. The major European indices closed lower. Uh, we saw losses of over 1% in each. Paris and Frankfurt, a bit less in London there. Consumer prices in France rose 5.1% in March, according to the EU standard calculations. That's the highest since records began in 1997. Now, it's still lower than some of its neighbours. In Germany, for example, prices rose by over 7% this month, nearly 10% in Spain. The biggest driver of those rises was energy prices, which are up nearly 30 percent over the past year. But food prices were sharply higher as well, and that's weighing on French consumers and producers alike. Joseph Keane has more. 
its inflation in action in French supermarkets. Over just five weeks, the average price of chicken has already gone up by 15 cents, and it's set to go up even further before the summer. I've got three kids and I won't stop buying them chicken. As an old man, I will end up being vegetarian. At this farm in the heart of the Alsatian countryside, more than 4,000 chickens are fed a special mix of chicken feed. With the war in Ukraine, the price of that chicken feed has gone up. It's a mix. 75% of it is grain. It's a mix of corn, of wheat. The prices have exploded. They've gone up by 30% and it will go up by 20% in the next three weeks. By May or June, I can't even say. There's a risk of it rising even further. About 65% of a chicken's final resale value is linked to how much it costs to feed it. But there are other factors at play too. This farmer keeps his poultry in a building heated by gas, which is also soaring in price, and he refuses to sell at a loss. The way in which we look at commercial negotiations going forwards is important because buyers need to take into account these price rises, which is really important for us to continue to do what we're doing. The effects of inflation are a dilemma being faced by farmers across France. And the cost of living, the number one issue, Mark, for French voters uh, about 10 days ahead of that first round of presidential elections. Indeed, unrivaled coverage here, France 24, of everything in the run-up to that election, and of course, all the business angles from Kate Moody. Great to see you. Thank you, Kate.